Thank you and hello everyone to this philosophically inspired talk about the state of the copyright debate. Um, um, so the basic starting point of my presentation is that there are two problems with copyright. On the one hand, I think that current copyright regulations are far too expansive and benefit neither authors nor the general public. And on the other hand, I think there's something wrong with the way we talk about copyright. So this is what I call the meta problem. Um, uh, correspondingly, I have two goals in my presentation. I want to quickly uh, highlight the basic principles that I think should guide copyright regulation. Um, these are based on the research I've done in moral philosophy, and I want to use my research or my experience doing research to highlight some of the main issues I see in the copyright debate. Um, yeah, before I start, a short disclaimer. First of all, um, my views on copyright might seem, or probably are, pretty radical. Um, if you disagree with what I say, please uh, send me an email afterwards. You, I'll, I'll show you my email. Um, I also think that no matter how radical these ideas are, or no matter whether you agree with them or not, the points about how to communicate are still valid, no matter the convictions you may hold. Um, also, because I will be talking about arguments about copyright and arguments about arguments about copyright, it might be a bit jumpy, the, uh, the presentation, but well, I hope you enjoy the ride. Um, so yeah, what do you start with in philosophy? Most work in philosophy starts by um, yeah, defining what it's going to talk about. So we need to define the terms. So usually philosophers will spend quite some time defining the terms to make it clear what they're going to talk about and what not. And this already brings me to the first cardinal sin of the copyright debate, mislabeling. So I think in the copyright debate, there's often, we often, there's often use of words for things that are not actually the common understanding of these words, or there are expressions which really have no clear definition at all. Now, why is this problematic? Well, if we don't know what we're talking about, then it's really hard to have a conversation. But in the best of cases, you'll have two people thinking they're having, having a conversation, but just actually having two monologues. And yes. Um, yeah, I think this applies to all of these things. Uh, and in fact, we can now add uh, commercial, non-commercial to this, as we heard before. Um, I'm just going to quickly elaborate on commercial scale IP infringement as an example. I think most people, when they hear this, they think of large organizations making big amounts of money with uh, stuff they do not own. But in fact, it might apply to you posting some photo on your blog if you accept donation on a blog, or even just peer-to-peer uh, -peer file sharing in some cases. So yeah, not always clear what's behind the term. Um, now, if we have done the, the definitions and all that in philosophy, we can then start uh, with the argument, which in case of copyright ethics means uh, talking about the interests that people have in, copy, uh, in, in authorial works. So one argument is about the public interest. So the idea is that the general public, not the authors, but the general <coughs> public has an interest in copyright, namely because copyright enables authors to make money, because they can make money, the authors make, produce better goods, uh, better, better books and music and so on. And the public profits from that because they now have access to works that wouldn't even exist without copyright. Now, this only works if copyright is the only or is the best way of paying authors. And I'm not entirely sure about this. And in fact, I'm not the only person who's not entirely sure about this. Here's a quote from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, a rather a reputable source, which uh, uh, states that econo economists do either say they do not really know how to determine the matter, or they think that actually copyright fares worse than alternatives. So what I think is very important is to start talking about uh, alternative forms of remuneration. This um, already brings me to my second uh, cardinal sin of the copyright debate, which I named label gazing. Uh, what I mean by this is that there seems to be a lot of focus on uh, arguments that support people's ideas, uh, people's given points of views, and very little uh, acceptance of uh, countervening kind of arguments. Um, the uh, alternative forms of remuneration are a case in point because I think these are not really mentioned all that often in policy debates. Um, here's another example. It's from the recent report on the EU InfoSoc Directive, which um, where it states, uh, it mentions a uh, study that says that 39% of uh, all EU economic activity is based on IPR-intensive industry. Now, that sounds like a massive amount uh, of economic activity, 
And the question arises where that number comes from. And it comes from the fact of counting all activity by all companies that hold a trademark or patent or copyrighted work. And uh, well, that means that uh, the waiter in a uh, chain of restaurants that has a trademark or the farmer that produces Parmigiano, they're all doing IPR intensive work. Now, this fault, and it is, interestingly, it says evidence-based uh, improvement just below in the next paragraph, which I found also very interesting. Um, yeah. This has been shown, this study, to, to not really uh, be very uh, adequate, and still it keeps appearing and reappearing. All right, so um, then we obviously don't only have to talk about the public's interests, but also about authorial interests. So the authors who produce a work, they also have some interest in seeing their works protected. Um, before I talk about how I think they should be protected, I want to quickly mention that here, it's not about money. As, we have, as, as I have mentioned before, um, we could pay authors by means other than copyright. So here we're talking about other interests that authors might have. I believe that these two principles are essential. What I mean by that is that first of all, I think authors should have the right to be named the authors of their work. And secondly, I believe that um, it is essential that if someone uses an authorial work without the author's permission, that they make it known that the author did not give like their approval or their endorsement of this use. What, what I uh, want to achieve with those, these two principles is simply that authors receive social recognition for their useful work and are not made responsible for things they did not do. And yeah. Now, at this point in my research, I felt pretty confident about uh, having found the most important principles and about stopping my analysis because, well, given my general idea about the subject, I, I was pretty happy with what I found. However, I paused a bit and I thought about what else could be important, and I came up with some additional principles. Um, so, uh, profit sharing. What I mean by this is that why shouldn't authors get some predefined part of the profit if someone uses their work commercially? I think there's, yeah, there's really nothing against, against that. In fact, if pe people could just make money with someone else's authorial works, and not even uh, let them have their share, that would be, well, it would be exploitation. And I also think this principle doesn't hurt the general public because non-commercial users are in no way uh, 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 impacted by it. Maybe more surprisingly, for given my uh, perspective, is that I thought maybe in some regards copyright isn't expansive enough. Maybe there are people who, who should be protected by copyright but aren't. And these people I term contributors. So they are, pop, for example, people like the master craftsman who makes the statue based on someone else's sketches, or most people who are involved in the making of a movie. All these people, they don't get any protection by copyright, but they are really very involved in the, in the, in the fashioning of these creative works. And I thought maybe these people should also you know, be given some protections. Now, uh, yeah, I didn't follow that idea further, but that was just an idea. Um, this brings me to the final cardinal sin of the copyright debate, intellectual sloth. When we think we have found the solution or the principles or, or whatever uh, we think is the right thing to do, maybe we shouldn't then stop all intellectual activity, but rather pause and reflect on, on what we think is right and, and, see, yeah, and see whether there's maybe some other solution or things we have forgotten about. Um, I think this is, this is the cause that in, in the copyright debate we see a lot of discussion going along set tracks and very little open-ended investigation about real alternatives to the current system. And yes, I, I, I really think that serious debate of real alternatives is necessary. Well, um, thank you very much. I hope this has been interesting. Of course, I've only shown the problems and I haven't really proposed any solutions. And of course, the solutions would be even more difficult to, to find and would require some real political will. Um, if you want to find out more about uh, what I've said, there's my email on my website, where you can also find my master thesis on which this is based. I'm also currently writing a paper on the topic, which I will be presented at a conference, and that will also be uh, published there. Everything is under Creative Commons, of course. And yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>